is a regular AD you know, if you have a so if you want to solve to just ask the app D max, whatever you have this case. This is all you need. And that's your wireless work. Yeah, my wireless. And then fine. We can prepare some more maps because I asked some people in preparation, they were over prepared. The most simple text data that you can ever think. Node is plus and not level. It's no bad, it's fine. Because there's some guy here, maybe it's Yeah, 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 but you should take stock of the memory of the system. Stock of the memory of the system, and then for the program we're going to write, yeah. probably you don't really need okay. to do the kinds of things. Because I want everybody to think about it. If then you have, you if you have a reading. shell that does. Uh, so that well, this, this, this thing came yesterday, but I haven't really used that okay, before. Okay, so this one is for the interactive part. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. Yeah. And then you, you need a text editor. Yes. Please. And then you eventually yeah. will copy and paste that. Or you okay. 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 Hey, I did this for the copy. We will install it in the package. Great. So, everybody. Welcome to this two-day Python course, and thank you for coming, and we hope you will profit, and we will learn something from you also. <laughs> That's always what happens. So just uh, a round of introductions. So my name is Ricardo, and Antonio is my uh, colleague, and we will alternate on, on the stage, and Sergio is also here to help. So the format of the course we would like to have this rather interactive. So please ask questions anytime. Stop us when you do not understand something and ask for explanations. And there will be plenty of exercises that you will do in class and homeworks for tonight. That's fun. Um, so more about us. So we are basically half of this Grid Computing Competence Center at the University of Zurich, uh, which despite the old-fashioned name, is, uh, has expanded its scope over the years and is now just providing, say, <coughs> support for research groups for running large-scale computations. So what we do is basically the full stack from bare metal to application development on the, upon request and demand. And we use Python for most of our middleware. So at some point we thought, okay, it would be cool to teach classes in Python because we have some experience and we would like to share with you. So that's the idea. And now, what about you? So can we have a round of what are your names? What's your experience with Python or other programming languages? And maybe what you would like to learn in this course? We can start with you and then yeah. go around the table. So I'm Florian, I'm working so at SketchUpW. Um, my experience with Python, I did a lot of scripting uh, a few years ago through Retrieve and Pass, such as Linux and something like that. In Python? In Python, yeah. And uh, then I stopped to use more Java, and I started Python again a few months ago uh, to uh, develop uh, some kind of wrapper around open stack suite. And uh, so I was involved in that. Well, if you already did a lot of stuff, yeah. you're probably yeah. more advanced than our average uh, yeah. attendee. But sure. But uh, I, uh, yeah, you forget this stuff. <laughs> if you don't <laughs> Java after some time, like, <laughs> like that. it's also true. <laughs> Thank you, Flori. Yeah, my name is Alexi. I work in Java as well. Uh, I did some scripts in Python. I contributed code to OpenStack, Python code. Uh, I yeah, I have a little bit of experience. Yeah, you could have said more. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, we're also just users, well, users of OpenStack. We did not get completely that code, but that's great to know that you guys are working on it. So now we know. That's a new blame. Yeah. 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 I'm from Sibiria. I'm training at the ITC lab. Currently working with Python, but just started from scratch like two months ago, so I'm a newbie as well. <laughs> I'm Piyush, I'm a researcher uh, with uh, ZHAW. Um, um, I started looking into Python 
not that long ago, like five, six months ago, um, did few scripting for a European project. Um, so I would say I'm not an advanced Python person, but I know my way around. So. Great, thanks, Vidish. I'm Desi. Uh, together with Vikram, we're from the University of uh, Bern, also working with Vidish on this project. Uh, pretty much I haven't put my fingers on a single line of Python. <laughs> okay. uh, so I'm a little bit more of the management, because in three years anyway, I haven't touched the code at all. So but I you have some past experience with coding or yes. no programming yeah. at all? No, I mean, I have used C, C++, and if you can count MATLAB as coding, because a lot of people <laughs> don't really, but... <laughs> so I, I have the concepts, but the exact execution, how it's done in Python, I Great. don't really know. Thank you. So, as you said, I'm Adnan from University of Bern. I just came to Python two weeks ago. <laughs> I just got to know some basics, the structure, how to start a uh, hollow world and some database. Nothing much. I have some experience with C plus and Java, okay. but uh, with uh, Python. Good. So you you three are working on the same set of projects, and yeah. yeah. what, what kind of um, project is that? If I may ask. Um. Dance, yeah. Said very simply, is trying to put the mobile network in a cloud, <laughs> which means we have two types of functionalities. We have management functionalities, like classes that have to redistribute resources, or maybe uh, put a virtual machine up, or scale it up, or down. Or so it's just for me to do things yes. like examples or something that I can virtualization. Like how to make how to make things virtual in the cloud. So in our specific case, then there is, a, I think you work more on these management entities, right? And we have to uh, work on implementing some of the specific radio parts, which exactly the problem we're looking at the moment is we need to do some, uh, some profiling of the radio and how much it affects computing. And then we have to have some algorithms or classes that we have the mapping, but also some logical decision to be taken. So we don't expect the first step to be a brain killer. <laughs> but okay, well you need to know the syntax <laughs> to, <laughs> to put it in. Indeed. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Liz. Um, Patrick, quite a stranger to, to the topic, uh, but um, also working on separately, but in a, on, in a QMA position. Working with uh, VTA mostly, but I see that there are extensions to Py towards Python and then to Classic. Learn about it. And um, I have little expectation that I'm <coughs> talking out as a pro as, as you guys, but um, yeah. I'm just trying to prove. Okay, that's, but yeah, let, let me stress that again. If you don't understand something or if you have questions, just stop <laughs> us anytime, ask questions. We want to be as interactive as possible. And yeah, and, I mean, 99% uh, for you guys, and uh, one? maybe you have us. <laughs> okay, but don't be afraid to agree with me. I'm very bad with names. Okay, so probably we already covered this, but yeah. Um, the course assumes a basic understanding of computer programming. So we're not uh, explaining what a variable is or what a loop is. We assume you already know, and we will just tell you the Python syntax for that. So uh, the first part of the course, so today we'll basically introduce Python syntax and focus on Python specific features that you do not find in other languages or that are significantly different from other languages. But again, the questions asked. All the material, so all the slides, solutions to the exercises, etc., is on the website. We. This one. Uh, actually, it will be. So we will sort of uncover uh -huh. the slides as we progress. So by now, you can only download the instruction and workstation setup, and then the the other slides will become active as we as we go. So and solutions will be there after we've done the exercises. Yeah. Mostly, I think we need to a Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, we will ask you tomorrow to 
um, please fill in a short questionnaire with feedback, these kind of things, it's completely anonymous. Uh, but please do it, even if you have negative feedback, or especially if you have negative feedback, because it helps us improve the experience for the next courses. Some examples we will present using this online tool called the Online Python Tutor. It's a web-based tool, this is the address, that lets you step through the code, so this uh, uh, left pane, and on the right pane you have um, basically a description of uh, a dump of the entire memory, so what's the value of every variable and how they reference each other, so sort of graphical debugger. It's good for small snippets and for understanding how the interpreter and the Python interpreter works with its memory. So you have memory dump on the right and code on the left. We will walk through examples can later. Can you import stuff? Um, uh, you can import stuff, not everything. But yes, most standard Python modules work with that. And then, of course, um, today's course is on the scratching the surface of Python, so you probably want to have a more structured resource for reference and for learning. <coughs> the Python tutorial is the official document you will find on the uh, Python website. It's an excellent tutorial. So my warm advice is do read it from start to end, because it's one of the best tutorials I've ever seen on any programming language. We're mostly following the content there with some things left out because there's not enough uh, time for it. But I think that would be the first stop. If you want to learn Python, read the Python tutorial. Uh, then this second resource um, is a set of slides, a huge set of slides. Last time I checked it was 300 and counting. So they go from the very basic assignment variables and uh, summing numbers to advanced topics like object relational mapping using SQL alchemy and so forth, building your web application, etc. So it's a very good and large reference for the Python world in general. Um, okay, the third one was that because we used to have more Java programmers than we have today. So this is an introduction to Python for people who already know Java, and it's probably useless for anyone else. Uh, but we keep a curated list of links at this address, and you will find there more links to resources, including also exercises and poems and links to other things that we reference in the slides. A word of warning, there are currently two major versions of Python uh, in production. Python version 2, the uh, latest release is 2.7 something, and that's the, late, the last release in the version 2 series. So there will never be Python 2.8 because all development happens in the Series 3, currently at 3.4, released a couple of days ago. Python 3 is better in that they took the occasion of polishing the syntax or um, removing some backwards compatibility stuff that did not fit the evolution of the language anymore. But for that, uh, not every Python 2 code can run the Python 3 interpreter. And in particular, some of the major Python software packages have had historically compatibility problems. So now everything should run on Python 3, uh, but people are still using Python 2 for production. So the default version, if you install Ubuntu Linux or Fedora or whatever, almost any version of Linux, the default Python version is 2.7 and you have to install Python 3 separately. Okay, this is a link to a talk, uh, one 
uh, one year ago, but the issue still stands. So if you want to see what are the pros and cons of choosing each version, then this is half an hour of discussion and why choose the one or the other for your project. Uh, we will focus on Python 2 since it's today the most common, but everything we say will work also on Python 3 and we will try to find out the differences when they occur. They are rather minor, but something <laughs> does not work. Okay, so again on the course format, there will be a sequence of these presentations and interspersed with exercises. During the exercises, we will walk around and are available for questions and help. And again, ask questions anytime. I gather any one of you has a working Python environment by now. Okay, so I can just skip this. Uh, if you still don't but have um, working wireless, <coughs> you can go to this site, wakari.io, and then you can request a free account, which you get in a couple of minutes, and you will get a web-based interpreter in which you can run commands, and it's running Python 2.7. Okay, so if you have a working Python interpreter, first thing to do, download this welcome.py file from the website, save it in your working directory, start the Python prompt and type import welcome. So that's so this is Python interpreter and you see the three greater than signs with three arrows. That's the prompt. And then you just type this command and see what happens. You should download it. Uh, but when you see something orange on the slides, it's a uh, link. So you can click on it and you should download it. Yesterday, I quickly just was looking something, and they recommended you have, of course, a folder of scripts where you keep your scripts. Um, so I guess this is also maybe a good style to not just dump everything in my Python directory. But say it again. When when I will, I mean, continuing to work, I guess it's a good style to have a subfolder, of course, where I keep my scripts. Yes. So not now I just dumped it in the general folder, but I guess. Yeah. Yes. It's a good style of structure. Even for today, probably because there will be a lot of files, etc. It's probably better to just already make a folder for the course and put all the course yeah. stuff there.
the slide right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. We can just go to the slide right now, but not bad yet. Yeah, that, that, that's a piece yeah. fixing that. It's okay, it's okay. Just it's okay. <laughs> Would you type it as well? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> More in depth than that. Um. I just took my own stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Slides will be online in a couple of minutes, uh, assuming the wireless works. Mm -hmm. But let's oh, just the wireless. <laughs> my my laughter. But let's just start. So we have already just used the so-called Python shell. So Python is an interpreted language, which means you have to use this Python program to run Python scripts. The Python program, the interpreter, reads your script and then execute this, so actually compiles it to bytecode, so to the simpler forms of the script, and then executes this bytecode. So whenever you run a Python file, you will see file name.pyc appearing in the directory, that's the cache for the bytecode. But that's irrelevant, things just work. So you type, you type commands and Python executes it. And the script is as if you would type the thing at the prompt, one line at the time. You start Python by just typing Python at the terminal prompt. Yes. Oh, sorry. It's a nice I'm frustrated with my computer. It's not really happened. Okay, the basic thing Python shell just works as a, let's say, calculation. So you type in a line, Python executes that line. So you ask Python to sum two numbers you get uh, the sum of the two numbers as a reply. You can continue a line if it's too long onto the next one by ending the line with a backslash character. So it must, in this case, backslash must be the last character on the line. So no spaces after that, nothing more. So backslash and then immediately new line. And as you can see, this silly example just concatenates two strings. Uh, there's a feature. So the three arrows are, let's say, the primary prompt. When you use this feature to continue line, so when Python is expecting some input that will be considered as part of the line before, the prompt changes to three dots. So this is a continuation. Yes. Maybe it's a bit cringe, but I discovered you have to explicitly indicate spaces. So if you have one concatenate strings, you cannot just say one word second, but you have to in include the space in the part of the string, right? Uh, yes, if you want the space to be, yes. if you want the okay. string with three spaces in it, yes, you have to put three spaces. Um, types in Python, so Python again is a type language, so what values can you insert into the interpreter? These are the basic building blocks. So there's a Boolean type, has only two possible values, true and false. Mind, true and false are spelled with a capital initial. So 
So true with the capital T, false with capital F. Then int is the type of integer numbers. Float is a double position floating point using whatever position your architecture uses, but any computer that I know of uses I try to be 80 bits floats. STR is the type of text, so strings of characters are type STR for a string. This is something that changes between Python 2 and Python 3. So in Python 2, STR is basically the sole type of text, so there's STR for normal strings and Unicode for um, strings with Unicode characters, and the thing is swapped in Python 3, in that STR is a byte string and Unicode is the text by default. But that's probably the single major difference between Python 2 and 3. Lists are lists of Python objects, and dict is a key value mapping. We will cover this in detail after. Uh, and then you can build your own types by building custom Python objects, and that's the topic for tomorrow. So regarding strings, the basic way to manipulate text, strings are always enclosed in quotes. You can use double quotes, or you can use single, single quotes, it's the same. The choice is there so that you can use a single quote as an apostrophe in the text, or you can use double quotes as the text. So if you use single quotes to enclose the string, then you can use double quotes in the string, and vice versa. If you use double quotes, then you can use a single quote within the string. And if, if you use in both, can you use in both, then probably the simplest thing is to concatenate to string. So can you not use some sort of like a escape character? You can you can you can also escape. You can use double double quotes, yes, rubber quotes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.